The key points from this article is that it's important to ensure exercise is a part of every type 2 diabetes patient's management plan. Structured exercise training is associated with absolute reductions in glycolated hemoglobin or HbA1c and improvements in muscle strength by 38%. Reductions in cardiovascular risk factors such as blood pressure and waist circumference also occur. Furthermore, reduced fitness has shown to be an independent predictor of mortality for people with type 2 diabetes, with similar increases in relative risk from reduced fitness regardless of their BMI. Patients should exercise at least every second day to optimize the exercise-induced benefits of insulin active sensitivity. And factors affecting a patient's willingness to commence an exercise program often revolve around a, a patient's previous exercise history, their understanding of the role of exercise and how what it plays in the prevention and treatment of diabetes, their expectations of, of outcomes, and their confidence to exercise. And so it may therefore be preferable to instead talk about movement or activity or specific tasks um, that require sitting less rather than talking about exercise. So, but how is this relevant for us? Well, general practitioners have a really exciting role within diabetes management to educate their patients on the benefit of movement and how working with an exercise physiologist is helpful for the best outcomes.